Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. What a difference a year makes. Last year, we waited with bated breath to find out which quarterback at the Combine looked the best. And what did they say to the Browns front office personnel to prove how much they love the storied history of the Cleveland Browns? Oh, no, yeah. What about Baker Mayfield? Was he really, really, really sorry about planting an Oklahoma flag at midfield at the Horseshoe in Columbus? Everybody around here knew the dates of the Combine and the dates of the NFL draft. Not so much this year. I bet you that many New England fans, and especially their owner, Robert Kraft, couldn't care less about who they're going to take with the 32nd pick in the draft. And you know what? That's the way it's supposed to be. Jim Ingram is here tonight. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it is a uh, Wednesday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into our 23rd consecutive year. And as always, seen exclusively here on Cleveland.com, we've got uh, Jim Ingram here. And uh, Mike, uh, Dave Bacon is down in, uh, in uh, Indianapolis, the Circle City. And uh, he'll circle around uh, Lucas Oil Stadium and uh, uh, find out what these guys had to say in the Combine. Jim, I, I mentioned in the open, the Combine used to be Super Bowl time for Cleveland fans. Mm -hmm. I didn't even – it snuck up on me this year. Yeah, who would have thought that? The, 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 the Combine, of all things, is, you know, we're just kind of taking it for granted because <clears throat> the Browns really don't need anything, right? Right. I mean – Well, here's how I picture it going uh, – Goodell says, all right, it's time for the Cleveland Browns, and they'll say, no, we're good. <laughs> we, we don't need it. Pass. <laughs> we'll pass. <laughs> we'll pass or we'll throw. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think they do need? You know what I, I don't think is being mentioned in, enough, in my opinion, is a linebacker. I, I, I really thought their linebackers were a little shaky last year. And to me, uh, you look at all the teams that make the playoffs and win the Super Bowl, They've all got good linebackers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I, and I, you know, I, I know they had some injuries there, but uh, I just didn't see a lot of uh, linebackers who jump off the screen at you when you're watching games, the good ones. Right. And, and, and those guys just didn't for me. Yeah, I've always thought the trenches, you, you, uh, you block better or you tackle better. That's where you win games. You forget linebackers. You need, you need you, they cover passes and the runs. Mm -hmm. Let's go down to uh, Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. There's uh, Dave Bacon standing by or sitting by. Hey, Dave, how are you? I'm doing well, Les. How are you? Uh, good. I got anytime I've got Jim Ingram with me, I'm doing fine. All right, you're sitting uh, resting between uh, periods, apparently. Uh, what, what's going on in Indianapolis? What did you find out today? Well, it, it, the Browns had media availability. Freddie Kitchens with the national media, and the question that came up was Kareem Hunt, and he had to answer the questions. Freddie did a great job and basically said he felt that Kareem Hunt in his hometown could do more good than anywhere else if he was able to get his life straightened out. We also find, found out right now they're not concerned about Kareem Hunt, the football player. They want Kareem Hunt, the person, to get right so that Kareem Hunt, the football player, can help the Browns. Well, that, that's pretty interesting because we've heard from supposed experts that he would be better off away from his friends that he grew up with, and maybe Cleveland isn't the best uh, way to do it. Although you got the team here, I don't know how much you know, Roger Goodell is going to allow him to be active with the team or even be out near Berea, but uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Well, right now there's nothing that's been done. They are doing an investigation, and obviously the expectation is there will be some sort of suspension coming for Kareem Hunt. But the Browns are trying to meet with him, help him in any way they can, support him so that he can get his life together and earn the second chance that they're willing to, get, to give him as long as he keeps on the straight and narrow. Talking to Dave Bacon, who is in uh, where the Combine is. That would be Indianapolis, Indiana. Hey, Dave, what, what's the schedule today, to, tomorrow, and into the, into the end of the week? Today was a lot of availability for the NFL teams, head coaches, general managers. Early in the day tomorrow, they'll wrap that up. John Dorsey will address the national media, and I'm sure Kareem Hunt will come up again. 
And then the players start filtering in in the afternoon. And that's when they'll have the availability. They'll start by position groups. They'll go and do the drills and all the other stuff. But really, the focus of it is, for, for the teams right now, is meeting with the players, finding out what makes them tick, finding out, you know, do they like football enough to play for any given organization? Jim, would you guess that at the combine that's more important than how far a guy throws the ball and all that <clears> stuff, <throat> talking about the meetings and how they their psychological yeah. uh, stuff yeah, that's yeah, going I, on? Yeah, I'm not you – know, some of the, the questions we've heard over the years that they ask these guys are a little – sketchy but but I think there's a lot of value in that because you know you're investing a lot of money in these guys especially your first round picks and you know you can there's the football side of it but there's also the personality side and you know you, you want to get to know the guys and try to you know weed out the guys that don't seem like they're a good fit for you just socially or you know the, how they interact with people so that I think there's value in that. Dave you, you've heard about Jimmy Haslam saying that he can tell something just by watching taking a guy to dinner and see his uh, eating habits, uh, his uh, ordering habits, and it's just how he conducts himself. Um, I think Paul Brown invented that back in 1946. Paul Brown was ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. Remember the, the uh, walkie-talkies in the headsets that are now here? Paul Brown was doing that way back yeah. in the 40s and 50s. But the, the important thing is how they interact and and. These guys admitted they'll try to push buttons, see what makes them mad, see what motivates them. That's what the combine is for. It gives guys 15, 20, 20 minutes, a half hour to get to know the person that they're going to invest a lot of money in. Jim, do you think if a guy's being interviewed by a team he doesn't want to be associated with, he t comes off as a total bozo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he could, he could just like, b like blow off the interviews because I, I, I'd rather not play for you. Right, As but you, you walk can't in the tell door, them you, that. Well, or if you walk in the door and say, I'll talk to you guys, but I'm really not interested. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Dave, any uh, with uh, Freddie, uh, Freddie Kitchens, any uh, uh, positions or names slip out in his discussion as to what uh, the Browns might be looking for? Just a couple of tidbits. They do want to get Brashad Perryman back. He's a, obviously a free agent. They, they're they interested in having him at the right price coming back. Thrilled that he got Greg Robinson under contract. It allows them not to have to address the left tackle immediately via free agency or the draft. So very happy with those kind of things. Just little tidbits that came out. You know, it's interesting, and uh, Freddie Cousins said it when he was introduced as the new head coach of the Browns. He said, what's, every, what's everybody so excited for? We were 7-8-0, uh, eight, and oh, or 7-8-1. and one. Yeah. Didn't even have a winning record, and I think that, that's a good attitude. We as fans were happy with that year, but he yeah. is a coach, and the player is not so happy. Yeah, I mean, in a vacuum, you look at that record and say, well, this is a mediocre team. But, you know, you look what came the two years before that, yeah. and it looks like a team that's really on the move quickly now. Yeah, 1-31 in 31 versus 7-8-1, uh, in one, I, I would think. So, uh, uh, Dave, what? Uh, uh, it's not a bad, it's not a good uh, crop of quarterbacks. Um, what, are, what are you looking for there? Although a couple guys can really improve their position, including Ohio State's former quarterback. Well, yeah, and, and you know, Haskins is a good guy. No, no question about it. Kyler Murray is a guy that will intrigue some people as well just because of the success that Baker Mayfield had. The guy that followed in his footsteps in Oklahoma and winning the Heisman Trophy. Now, Murray, great athlete. He was, I think, the eighth overall pick by the Oakland A's, was going to be a Major League Baseball player, and has decided he's going to focus on football for now. So that'll be interesting, that dynamic between uh, Murray and Haskin as to who goes number one overall for the quarterback. And it'll be a split decision, I think. All right, Dave, hang in there. We're going to come on back. Jim Ingram is with us. We're going to take a break and, and uh, get back to you. Phone calls, uh, phone lines open at 216-575-0403. We'll hear more from Dave when we get back. Facebook.com is the place to go to find us. Facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine with new content posted each and every day. You'll be able to respond to our question of the day. We'll take a look at some of our results a little bit later. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. 
The heart-pounding, fast-breaking action of college basketball is back when the 2019 Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament returns to the queue March 13th through the 16th, presented by Visit Myrtle Beach. Pulses will rise and hearts will race as the men and women of the MAC put it all on the line. Tickets for the MAC tournament are on sale now at the Q box office, online at thequeuearena.com, and at all Northern Ohio discount drug marts. MAC Tournament Basketball. Be there. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It's the best of the best, Cleveland. All-star cars, hot rods, and motorcycles at the 2019 Summit Racing Equipment IX Piston-Powered Autorama. March 15th, 16th, and 17th at the IX Center. If a piston makes it go, it's in this all-star show. Featuring motorcycles, antique trucks, insane hot rods in the asylum, tractors, military vehicles, along with all-star themed car clubs on display. New this year is Fat Man's Invasion with Euro Imports, Sport Compacts, Lowriders, and more. PistonPowerShow.com for details. Kids 12 and under are free. Discount tickets on sale now at select discount drug mark locations and Summit Racing Equipment in Talmadge. Welcome back. More sports and less Levine on Cleveland.com. Dave Bacon in, uh, in Indianapolis. We'll get back to him in a second. Jim Ingram in studio with us. Uh, Jim, uh, Freddie K Kitchen's saying all the right things. He, he, didn't, get, he mm -hmm. didn't take the course on how to do it, but so far he's following, following suit here. Yeah, yeah. He, Although he probably doesn't have a suit. <laughs> but if he did, he would follow he it. He would, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like listening to him talk. He, he doesn't sound like he's full of himself. He, right. he knows what he knows, and, you know, he, he speaks – you know, I think he, the way he speaks, the, the way he phrases things is, is very uh, refreshing, let's right. say, compared to the previous guy. Hey, Dave, how many uh, Browns personnel people are down there? Do you have any idea? Oh, there's a ton. <laughs> there is a, a number of Browns people kind of following Freddie Kitchens around all day. He went through Radio Row, did some things with the Browns radio network as well. Uh, there is a large contingent. You know, the other thing that was interesting about Freddie Kitchens, Les, he embraces the higher expectations that exist now. He said 31 teams end the season unhappy. Only one is happy, the Super Bowl champ. And his thing is, why not us? Why not the Browns? Well, that's refreshing to hear. Um, there's a point, however, in every Browns coach since 1999, a game or a situation where they have this look on their face of, why did I get, oh, that's why they can't get it done here. Hopefully that doesn't happen. You know, I, he he's not concerned about history. Yeah. He really isn't. And, and, and he knows you better it. not be if you're taking over of the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, and he does know the history. It's not like, uh, I mean, he, he knows where he's at and what is expected, hopefully. Um, all right, are you, with all those Browns personnel people down there, you got to be hearing some rumors, or not just about the combine, but... The uh, coming up with uh, free agency, which uh, will be with us not not too far from now. You know, it's interesting. The more people you talk to, the people think that the Browns are more likely to trade for somebody than necessarily sign a big name free agent. That's just John Dorsey's M.O. Find veteran guys who are really talented who just need a change of scenery. Having said that, Kevin Colbert, the general manager of the Steelers, said he would not uh, necessarily not trade Antonio Brown to a team in the division. He's willing to do that as long as there is a value that they deem credible for Antonio Brown. The flip side of that is Dave Gettleman, general manager of the Giants, said we did not sign Odell Beckham Jr. to an extension to trade him. So those are the two wide receiver big names that have been linked to the Browns. Doesn't sound like Odell Beckham is going anywhere. And Antonio Brown, if you meet the asking price, being in the AFC North doesn't preclude you from getting Antonio Brown. Jim, can you imagine Pittsburgh trading Antonio Brown to Cleveland? I, I just don't see how they could do that. 
I mean, you, to me, you would have to overwhelm them. I mean, yeah. give them more than anyone else would even offer because, you know, obviously the Steelers would be facing him twice a year. Yeah. And, and the last thing they want to do is, you know, have him go into Heinz Field and score four touchdowns against the Steelers. <laughs> hey, uh, Dave, um, uh, looking at what the Browns' needs are, which, uh, th I mean, they have needs, but it's not pressing as it has been in, in recent years. Are they, you think they're wide open as to what position they're looking for, or do you think they know right now? I think they're wide open. I think they're going to look for somebody that they fall in love with at 17, kind of like they did with Baker Mayfield at number one. And, and John Dorsey is a guy, he knows what he wants. He knows what he likes. There will be somebody on that board that he really wants. And if, if it's within a couple of picks, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes up and gets them. I would think it'll probably be an interior defensive lineman or a linebacker. Those would be the two areas that – kind of jump off the page is something that the Browns need to upgrade. Yeah, well, I would have thought, I think a lot of people would have thought with the kind of uh, salary cap uh, money that they have, that they would just uh, kind of spend it out there quickly. But that doesn't seem to be the, the MO of uh, John Dorsey. No, and that's a good thing because that's when you get into trouble. When, when you spend salary cap money because you have it, you end up regretting it when you have to pay some of your good young players. All right, uh, what do you think? Offense, defense, lineman, uh, line, Jim thinks they need linebacking help. What do you think? I agree. I think they need some interior defensive lineman, linebacker. I also think they need to find a quarterback late in the draft that they like as somebody that they bring along to be the eventual backup to Baker Mayfield. All right, 216-575-0403 if you want to uh, talk to Jim Ingram or, uh, or me for that matter. Dave Bacon, we appreciate you uh, checking in from Indianapolis, and uh, you're at the NFL Combine. And it is amazing how the NFL has just taken something and turned it into a media event uh, to make it a 12-month. Uh, if you think the players need to be in shape 12 months a year, the PR people are too. Yeah, it's not a media event. It's a media circus. Yeah. Over 1,000 credentialed media for the Combine. Unbelievable. All right, Dave, thanks for checking in. We will talk to you soon. Dave Bacon in Indianapolis. Uh, Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. You can catch the excitement of live harness racing Monday through, Friday, through Wednesday as well as Saturday evenings. 6 p.m. is the post time. Open early every day for simulcast action from the top thoroughbred and harness tracks around the world. We'll come back. Jim Ingram is with us. By the way, by the way it's free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. Back in a moment, more sports and less living continues exclusively on cleveland.com. Your basement is damp, dirty, and not somewhere you want to spend time. Let Nature Stone Flooring transform your basement into a true extension of your home. Nature Stone's proprietary hydrostatic ports allow water to simply evaporate so no mold or mildew. Plus, it has a higher insulation rating than carpet and is warmer than linoleum, vinyl, wood, or tile. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable basement floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Time for a How Come Quickie, Jim. How come a couple went to the gym on their first date hoping that their relationship would work out? <laughs> Look, you know, if you don't like them, you, you, I can hire you as my uh, Look, Quickie writer. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs>
All these years. Oh, well, it's easy. Did you ever figure out how many you've ever done in your career? No, but I got a new batch in from a viewer, <coughs> uh, and he saved the day here momentarily. He oh, sent okay. in a great one. He, the, other, the other day we used it. How come when I, I was reading an anti-gravity book and I couldn't put it down? <laughs> That's the whole essence of quickies. They're yeah, quick it is. and they're funny. Yeah. Appreciate it very much. Jim Ingram is with us. And uh, we have Dave Bacon down at uh, Indianapolis. Uh, the, as he says, the media circus is, is there. Um, Jim, let's turn our attention to the Indians here who made a move that maybe two, three years ago would have been highly regarded. Now I'm not sure how to regard it. And I'm talking about the signing of Hanley Ramirez. Again, two, three years ago, he would have been a super guy to have. Yeah, two or three years ago, they wouldn't have needed him also. Yeah, right. <laughs> but now, you know, I think, you know. It's a bad combination. <clears throat> they need him, and he may not be ready I mean, to how task. About, they, they've got 24 non-roster players in camp. That, that's like almost a whole completely separate roster is in the Major League camp. What do they do, get one at bat in an exhibition game, and if they get a hit, uh, they're okay until yeah, the next well, time? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, this would be, a, if you're a non-roster guy, a bad time to have a, a bad two games. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are the players thinking or their agents thinking that, Going to a place with 24 uh, minor league uh, contract guys, yeah. um, that seems to be a place you might want to stay away from. Well, you know, the number is 24, but all those guys, as far as competing for a roster yeah, spot, they know they're, they're not getting it. Well, they're only competing with maybe one or two other guys that are non roster guys and maybe a couple that are roster guys. So, you know, it's, it's a big group, but when you consider they're from different positions, that that just spreads it out a little bit, but that's still, I, I don't ever remember uh, the Indians anyway bringing that many guys no. to camp. That being said, I think I heard Francona say the other day that each year since he's been here, and it's hard to believe it's his seventh year now, that they've had a non roster guy break camp with the team every year. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's hard to believe with the team that yeah. has been as consistent or good, in the, especially in the last three years. And, and I think a lot of that is the guys they bring in, they just don't cast out a net and bring them all in. Right. I mean, they really put some thought behind this and research it, and they tend to bring in, you know, a good group of guys, and, and a lot of those guys that have made it in those seven years have been bullpen guys, which, you know, they've been really good at building bullpens uh, uh, for a long time, and, and I'm sure there's going to be one or two guys that will be on the bullpen, opening day bullpen that nobody expected when spring training is that, started. Is the bullpen, uh, I'm going to say pitching, but not so much with the starters, is the bullpen the Toughest thing to judge when you're you're looking at a team and trying to figure out how they're going to do yeah. this year. Yeah, it is because you could have you could have a great bullpen one year and bring the same group back yeah. the following year and have a terrible bullpen. It, it's you got to know when they're going to lose it. <clears throat> yeah, it's the, like the nature of, of of the job, and you know, you know, a lot of guys are consistent throughout their careers, but relievers seem to just be all over the you know, except for the really elite ones. You just never know from year to year if they can continue. You know, pitching at the level they did the previous year. On, on paper, do you like the bullpen, or you do you think it's okay? Um, and on paper, it's a dumb thing to yeah, look uh, at. I, I actually kind of trust the Indians on this one. That, that you know, the names aren't jumping out saying they've got a loaded bullpen, but but you know, and Francona's very good at, at using bullpen, so I, I think they're going to be okay there. I don't think they're going to be like they were in 2016 when they had Andrew Miller who could do anything, but I, I think they'll. They'll figure it out and get a reasonably competent bullpen, I think. What about the outfield? Just throw them up against the wall and see what sticks? Yeah, uh, that, I mean, that, that's to me the biggest. I mean, I don't think there's any question that it's the worst outfield of any team in spring training right now, you know, just when you look at it on paper. I think Matt Joyce is a guy that could be a non-roster guy that could, you know, hit his way onto the roster because, you know, he's got a track record, which is more than, you know, like four or five of those guys that are on the roster don't have because they're minor leaguers or guys at the beginning of their career. So I, I think the outfield is, is, is still by far the biggest question mark. I think as the before they got to spring training, they said, well, when we get to spring training, we'll look and see what they've got. Uh, and then they said, OK, one day is over. Let's get Hanley Ramirez. Yeah, and that's probably going to continue through camp. And I, I and you know, unless one or two guys really look good throughout camp, I'd be surprised if they didn't pick up a guy when everyone starts cutting down, and you know, the guys are put on waivers, and maybe they can grab a guy just before opening day to yeah. put out there. What I what I what I liked about Hanley Ramirez and that situation is, Francona said to him, "You tell me when you're ready," and yeah. as opposed to here, here's your here's the regimen. And we're going to follow it closely. He, right, yeah. he said Hanley Ramirez knows knows how to get in shape, and he knows what yeah. to do. And his career, you know, he's earned that kind of respect, yeah. you know, because he does have a really good track record. And this is really a, a, a risk free signing for them. I mean, he'll either, you know, be a guy that can DH for you, or he won't, and you'll probably know, 
you know, before the end of camp. What does this mean for for, for uh, Carlos Santana? If you say Hanley Hanley Ramirez might be the DH, you've got uh, you've got Bowers and you've got uh, and you've got Santana. Santana. So, yeah. what, is one of the odd man out? Or are they going to no, just I rotate think, everybody? I think they're all in. I think what this does, best case scenario, Ramirez can be the DH, and Santana and Bowers maybe one's the first baseman and one's the left fielder. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Pressure on the Indians to win this year while the window is open. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine. New content posted, question of the day, each and every day. Jim Ingram and I return in a moment exclusively on cleveland.com. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. It takes Smiley One heating and cooling to bring the heat when things get chilly. Find us at 440-449-HEAT. Welcome back to more sports and Les Levine. And uh, when we have a Browns question, we ask the Browns beat reporter from Cleveland.com, Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, Mary Kay, appreciate the time. Uh, Freddie Kitchens faces the national media here at the Combine. What were your, how, how do you think he did? You know, I think he did a great job. He had a lot of questions, some of which were controversial, talking about Kareem Hunt and things like that. I thought he did a really nice job. First of all, I think he was prepared for it, uh, and he pulled it off very well. In terms of Kareem Hunt, he really just talked about how he thinks he can do some good in the community. Uh, that basically echoes what I wrote in a column recently about the same thing. Uh, I do believe that he, if he can turn this horrible negative into a positive and help other people in the city of Cleveland and in Northeast Ohio, which of course is his hometown, I think some good can come of this. What else impressed you about with what Freddie Kitchen said today? Well, you know, he had a, a lot of uh, sort of newsy, notesy kinds of things on, on different things in terms of Greg Robinson and, and how they feel about having Greg Robinson back and how happy he is and how much he helped the team. So I think you can count on Greg Robinson to be a starter. He wants Brashard Perriman back. He doesn't want Duke Johnson to be a wide receiver. He wants to keep him as a running back. Uh, of course, he talked about Baker Mayfield, and he's totally fine with Baker's off-the-field, off-season pursuits, doing uh, you know, doing commercials and, you know, doing the Late Late Show and those sorts of things. Uh, he wanted him to get away from football and relax a little bit. Um, anything that surprised you that, that you heard here in, in day one of the Combine from media availability? No, nothing that, that really surprised me. Um, I did get a chance to talk to Andy Reid today, the Kansas City Chiefs coach, a little bit about Kareem Hunt, and he had very positive things to say about the fact that he thinks that Kareem Hunt is in good hands with John Dorsey, who knows him very well. Uh, I asked him, you know, is Tyreek Hill, uh, who is the receiver for Kansas City, a good example for how someone can come back from this and kind of get their life turned around? And he said yes, that Tyreek's done all the right things and, and you know, does set a good example for him. So these were some of the things. How excited are you at what the Browns are building? We've talked to some of the national people and they're excited. We know Cleveland's excited. You've been through a lot with this team. How excited are you where the Browns sit right now? 
Well, you know what? Uh, I'm excited for the fans. I'm, I'm excited for Cleveland. Everywhere I go, you know, even yesterday I met somebody that, you know, lives in Cincinnati and they were here and they were like, oh, I've been a Browns fan all my life. I mean, I get that everywhere I go now. Everybody feels like the Browns are on the right track. And I think that's an important thing. Oh, there's another important uh, thing that happened today that I, that I thought was interesting. I already wrote a, a little post about it, and that was Kevin Colbert, the Steelers GM, said that he has not eliminated anybody from the Antonio Brown sweepstakes. So uh, that could get interesting, especially because Giants GM Dave Gettleman sort of made it sound like he was not going to trade Odell Beckham Jr. Of course, I don't know if the Browns would be interested in trading for Antonio, but it's, it is very interesting that they would consider it. Were you surprised at all? Freddie Kitchens was asked, do you feel the need to get a name wide receiver, a big name? Were you surprised at all at his response? No, not at all. He, you know, he said, hey, you know, we don't need a big name anything to power anything. And he said, I'm not a big name. So, uh, no, he's, he's really not about that sort of thing. And we, of course, will ask John Dorsey more about that as the week goes on. What's, uh, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to as this combine week goes on? What do you what do you want to see, and, and what do you think the Browns really want to see? Well, I think you know they're looking at almost every position. They're not in a situation right now where they are forced to take a quarterback or any other position. You know, they even left tackle. I think heading into this offseason, a lot of people thought, well, maybe they have to go out and get that left tackle, and they're not pressured to do that anymore, of course, because they do have Greg Robinson under contract for another year. But uh, you know, they can look at the best defensive linemen. The, the defensive tackles, the defensive ends, linebackers, you name it, and it's an open book for them here. Mary Kay Cabot, as always, we appreciate the time. You can read her every day in the Plain Dealer, Mary Kay Cabot, Cleveland.com's uh, Browns Beat Reporter. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mary Kay. All right. Uh, I mentioned before the break that uh, there's some pressure on the Indians to win, it, although I, that's me putting the pressure on them. I, I'm not sure that Paul Dolan is feeling it. At least he's not going out and, and spending anything, at, although still have a couple of weeks of uh, spring training. But how much pressure is there to win? Uh, you've got the All-Star game here this uh, this year. Yeah. You've got uh, guys locked up for three years maybe in some cases, but that that's yeah. it. After that, they don't. Well, I mean, I think they're going to win the division uh, barring major injuries. But uh, I think where they are right now is th they've got a – They've got to get back into the playoffs and, and, and start winning some games. And the last year they got swept, and the year before that they blew a 2-0 lead to the Yankees. So, you know, they, getting to the playoffs isn't enough anymore, which in itself is, you know, progress. But but now they've got to get back there, and they've got to go much deeper than they've gone. And, you know, with the, the starting pitching that they have especially, that's the kind of starting pitching that the teams that get to the World Series and frequently win but it you can't win have. every game 2-1. to one. <clears throat> Right, you've got to, you've got to score some runs, and you know, you know, it's a weird lineup because you've got two guys that are almost guaranteed top five MVP finishers, but everything else is just and well, and Santana's a proven producer, but everything else is just kind of uh, murky right now as far as who's going to be where. You you sensing that Ramirez is going to come back from that last month and a half of last year? You, if he's going to be a top five guy? He's... Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, I, I, I can't explain what happened there, but I, my guess yeah, would be... he hit too many homers. <clears throat> he hit too many homers. He got kind of caught up in the whole statistical thing and started to put too much pressure on himself. But, you know, he's still only 24, 25, so he's, he's not even into his peak years. So I, I think he'll be fine. Is this make or break for Kipnis well, this I think season? It, uh, well... Yes and no. I mean, he, they would love for him to have a big season, but um, I'd be stunned if this wasn't his last one in Cleveland yeah. because, you know, they've got other options beyond him now after this year so that, uh, you know, unless he has a, season, a Mike Trout kind of season, I don't think <laughs> that uh, this will probably be it for him in Cleveland. Yeah, that's too bad because it seemed like <clears throat> the career was progressing the right way and then all of a sudden you couldn't count on him. Yeah, yeah, he, he kind of had some injury problems too, but – yeah, he was a you know when you look at historically, he's going to go down as one of the most productive and better second basemen in the history of the franchise. Who, who are you putting him up there with? Uh, well, I mean, Lajewa's by himself. Yeah, and, you know, Joe Robbie Gordon Alomar. Some good years, Robbie Alomar. But uh, if if you look, you know, just career totals and various things, you know, doubles, hits, right? He's even home there. runs. I think he's 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 getting close to. The all-time leader for a second base. Well, he passed Dwayne Kuyper a long time ago. Yeah, when he hit his second. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Jim Ingram is uh, with us, and uh, I right, Kluber. We talked about Kluber. Now let's talk about uh, about uh, Bauer. 
You know, he's, he, I don't know, did you read the Sports Illustrated story? I, I mean, did. It was very, a very interesting story. I mean, you can see why he is how he is and, and, and the way he acts the way he acts. But to me, there was a lot of valid, interesting things in there that he said that if it was said by anybody besides him, people would, I think, take more note of it. But he's, he, he really is, it's like, I, I've never, I don't think, uh, seen anyone like that in Cleveland sports, this kind of personality where right. he almost revels in the, in, 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 the, in the ill will he fosters around him. Here's what I see wrong with his logic of, of one year at a time that he, he wants to sign for. And by the way, part of it makes sense, assuming he doesn't get hurt. But what he's got to do is, number one, have a good year. And then he's got to go to a team that, A, has a lot of money to spend, and, B, uh, isn't pretty well set in the pitching, uh, starting pitching department already. It seems yeah. to me he's narrowing his options. Yeah, and, and he is. And, and, you know, teams are looking in this time more than ever for cost certainty. And why, you know, why would you bring him in for one year and then, you know, he's probably not going to re-sign with you unless, you know, it's the Yankees or Red Sox or a big market team. But it's an interesting strategy, which... I th only he would think up and, and try to execute, <laughs> and it'll be even more interesting to see uh, what kind of teams. I mean, you could almost argue that he, he's more likely to go to a, a mediocre team that says, well, let's take a, a one-year flyer on this guy and see what happens. Maybe he can push us over Somebody the top. should mention Juan Gonzalez to him. <clears throat> Turned down $140 million from Detroit, came here, blew out his knee in, what, the first game that he played? Yeah, well, I don't know if it was his knee or his Achilles or something, but yeah, he was yeah. never the same here. Yeah, th there's no question he's he's putting a lot of risk on himself. But you know, the other thing about that is he's he's really the one injury he had was a freak injury, so he's he, he's certainly not injury prone. So I, from his mind, he thinks I'm not going to get hurt. I can pitch like this every year. So why why not just auction myself off to the highest bidder? I can play year? with my drone. Yeah, yeah. There may be, there's probably drone uh, clauses in his contracts now, though. <laughs> Among other clauses. Sanity clauses. Groucho <coughs> <Yeah. laughs> Marx, 1932, I think that, that was. I, I'm, here's what I'm concerned about. The, the Indians have really been a well-run, the, the best-run franchise in town. We would agree with that, By right? far, yes. By far. And I think they looked at the Encarnacion deal and, and said, even though Encarnacion was making money on his attendance clause, um, he, he didn't set off a, a storm of people buying tickets to come to the game. Yeah. So I'm now thinking that you're, you're stuck with April and May, no matter how good your team is coming out of the gate, and Francona teams historically don't. I don't know the reason for that, but they don't. And they're, they're almost, they sell out opening day, and then they're, I said last night, probably in April and May wouldn't have more than two or three games with attendance more than 15,000. They're just locked into having bad attendance early on, and it's yeah. tough to come back from that. And I also think that um, the fans sense a distrust with the ownership, which they really shouldn't have because they have, in fact, won three, three uh, division titles in a yeah. row. Well, it, all that would hold true if they had kept Encarnacion. So if it happens without Encarnacion, you know, their payroll is, 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 is reduced a lot, which is the goal of this offseason. So from their point of view, I imagine they're thinking – you know, Encarnacion's not going to sell tickets. I don't think they ever really signed him to sell tickets, but but they're going to... That they gave up on him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole thing is, what's our payroll going to be? We want it to be less than it was the previous year. So, you know, they figured probably when they decided to trade Encarnacion that here's Hanley Ramirez. Nobody signed him. Maybe we'll take a shot at him and see if he can give us a, something close to an Encarnacion season at, at, at you know, a fraction of the cost. Jim Ingram is here tomorrow night. The D-man, Dennis Maniloff, uh, right here on Cleveland.com. When we come back, we'll take a look at that uh, question of the day on uh, our Facebook and your responses to that. Sokolowski's University Inn, I've been talking about them every day for about 26, 27 years. How about that for consistency? We're approaching Joe DiMaggio's record. We're halfway there. Is that right, math-wise? Let's see, 26? Yeah, pretty, almost. Yeah, almost. Uh, that's uh, located in Tremont, of course, the Abbey Avenue exit at, uh, outside downtown Cleveland, Interstate 71. That's where you find Mike and Bernie, where they've been uh, since 1923, or the family's been there, 1923, the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award. You can't get better than that. We'll come back uh, in a moment with Jim Ingram right here on Cleveland.com. 
Concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Reduce tracked in dirt, eliminate puddling and salt damage. Plus, Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable garage floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. some some new faces for, for everybody to get used to but you know I think that's that's natural that's part of you know every year in spring training there's gonna be new faces and uh, you know you you meet guys you get to know guys you build relationships and you kind of start to form that identity of a team and you know how you what the, what you want the team to be like I mean I think there's always room for improvement no matter how good the year prior was or whatever you know has happened previously I think that there's always room for for guys to get better and I think that you you know, you try to find areas where maybe things didn't go as well as you would have liked and kind of build a plan to to attack that and, and try to make those improvements that we talked about. And, and hopefully it, it makes you an all-around, you know, better pitcher, better teammate, all the above. I think that's, you know, that's why we all play the game is to, is to win. Um, you know, I think that no matter what your your personal goals are or your your different things you got going on off the field, I think that the reason we all play is, you know, once – once it's go time is to try to go out there and win and obviously be the last team to win a game in October. All right, do you think he's growing that beard back all the way? The full, I full growth? Yeah. I hope not also. Yeah, I, what is it with beards in sports these days? I mean, you would think guys that sweat for a living <laughs> would not want to add to the sweat by, by having right, tons they, of facial if hair. If they chew tobacco or chewing gum, that, that seems yeah. to me a problem also. Yeah, I mean, it's like in baseball, it's like at an all-time high. I mean, like every, every game you see, it's just, it's like just a bunch of guys with beards. All right, a couple of things stick out on, on this. Number one, I mentioned during the break that Corey Kluber's father went to Mayfield High School, and you, you topped that. Yeah, um, his father is my wife's cousin. Wow. Yeah. Small, small world this is. Uh, uh, let's check out uh, sports history for the day. Uh, today, uh, as we head to the end of, of February, end of March 26, 1992. At the age of uh, 16, Tiger Woods uh, became the uh, youngest player in uh, 35 years in the PGA. Whatever happened to him? <laughs> Some guys, you know, they fl- they're flashing the pans and you don't hear from them again. Yeah, I know. Where are they now? Probably yeah. handle that. He's had a pretty good career despite the, the last uh, six or eight years. Let's uh, check out this date in Les Levine sports history, find out what's going on that way. This is uh, the date, uh, 1997, Jim. The third baseman on Les's team won the league's Rookie of the Year award two years in a row. Hey, wait he, that, a he was good. You guys didn't have a commissioner, or what? How could that happen? <laughs> to rule against that? <laughs> he was that good that he won the Rookie of the Year award <laughs> two times. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. It is pretty impressive. All right, let's uh, check out uh, Facebook. See what you had to say. We asked you what pitcher needs to step up. Who's the uh, the Indians pitcher that needs to take the big step? We gave you choices: Mike Clevenger, Shane Bieber, and Adam Plutko. Of course, we assume you know about uh, Kluber and Bauer. So let's take a look at it. Uh, First one up uh, out of the box, Peter J. Butler, has to be uh, Mikey K. That's, uh, I don't know who Mikey K is, but Mikey C would be Clevenger. 
He's in a position from the uh, potent, uh, uh, to be the potential ace if Kluber falters or is traded. He will be there. Bauer became a, an ace, uh, but uh, one-year contracts will limit him. Joseph William Wrightmeiter, I believe a new emailer. Both Clevenger and Salazar will need to step up. I would begin to make Salazar the closer with his stuff. No, it'll be Brad Hand. Uh, he's demonstrated he can only be dominant once uh, through the lineup, a la Jose Mesa. Dan Macy says Adam Plutko because I'm sure they eventually will trade Kluber or Bauer. So they're taking a step ahead. And then uh, Andy Mees, assuming the top four pitchers, Kluber, uh, uh, Carrasco, Bauer, and Clevenger stay healthy, Bieber will have to build off his good rookie campaign and avoid the sophomore jinx. If Bieber has a breakout year uh, in the fifth spot on the majors, then the Tribe will be definitely the best starting five in baseball. And Ricky May says Clevenger will have to step up if Kluber or Bauer should somehow get injured or one of them is traded. Clevenger, along with Carrasco, will have to keep the ships uh, afloat. And judging by the potential starting lineup, we better hope that we're on the winning side of a lot of 2-1 to one and 3-2 uh, to two games. Watch this. The Indians somehow, someway come out and average seven runs a game. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. <clears throat> this might be one, one of the best rotations ever that the Indians have started a season with. And when you think about it, I mean, and they and some, the worst outfield. Well, yeah, that too. But I mean, th this rotation is like if all these guys stay healthy this year, you know, you could have legitimately four 18 game wins. A lot of teams would love to have Clevenger as their one or two man. Yeah, and, and he would be the one or two yeah. man on a lot of teams. All right. Um, so Hanley Ramirez is here, and you think he'll be here opening day. Is that correct? Uh, no, I, don't, I, I mean, I, I don't know. But, I mean, it, there, there's no risk as far as the Indians go either. He's right. going to be in the lineup at a good price or he's not going to be in the lineup, and that'll be that. But I think it's worth a, a very worthwhile gamble. Do you think the fans are, despite the three wins in a row of the, of the title, do you think they're, they're going to avoid the Indians, wait and see till mid-June, see how they're doing? I, I get that sense that they'll watch, yeah. but... They're not going well, to spend money early on. I mean, I think we're at the point now where we know the level of interest in baseball in Cleveland, regardless of how good the team is. I mean, you know, the, they went to the World Series in 16, and the next year, I, I think the season tickets didn't go up that much. And it, it, they, they've always been in the middle or in the lower half in attendance, except for that great run in the 90s. Right. But, but, I mean, this is this – is, Cleveland baseball. This is the, the the fans show up in these kinds of numbers almost regardless of the team. A, a friend of mine who's a season ticket holder uh, has seats near the on deck, the Indians on deck circle, and he says the um, All Star game price. How, what do you think the All Star game price is for that ticket? Oh, geez, five hundred. Five four five hundred and fourteen dollars. Yeah, they'll sell them, but yeah. that. Well, I mean, a lot of those tickets end up with corporate, yeah, corporate you know, people, not just especially from Cleveland, there. but, but yeah. you know, MLB partners. Plus, they, they also put in the seats in between what is used to, what is normally the aisle. They have three mm -hmm. or four seats in there. Yeah, I think they even extend the, the, the field boxes you know, out right. onto the field another well, row Well, all right, two. That, that's good. They, I, I don't know how much of the money goes back to the to MLB, but they, they of course, in addition mm -hmm. to what the money spent, concessions and all that stuff, I'm assuming they get a pretty good chunk of the ticket. Yeah, I, I think I think the business it brings into the city, uh, apart from the the game itself, is 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 probably bigger than the Indians will realize from the the actual game. Right, so. and and I'm assuming also that the Indians have tied in um, the All Star Game tickets with potential new season ticket holders also. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and and you know there <clears throat> there there's merchandise that they can market this year, right. all star related that'll you know be more than they would normally sell in a, a non all star year. Are they going to lose money because of Chief, the loss of Chief Wahoo, or do you think well, it doesn't matter sales wise? Or they can no, still they're sell. Still, they're still selling. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't think people will not come to the game because they're not on the uniform. He's not on the uniform anymore. But uh, no, I, I I don't think so. I think it'll just you know if they, as long as they can. S as long as they can still sell it in the gift shop. I, I heard there was a, a movement to get to make it uh, Chief Wahoo Day opening day. Everybody wears something with Chief Wahoo. Well, that would be a. a <laughs> well, that would be. It would be. You know, it'll be interesting on opening day. Will the uh, the the Indian protesters? Yeah, know, will they be will there? They still be there. Yeah. And if they are, there'll, there'll be protests on both sides. <laughs> one, you know, protesting that he's not right. on the uniform, and the other one. The that uh, the mustard company. Um, has taken Wahoo off the off their label. 
Oh, it used to be on there? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Because wouldn't they have to pay the Indians to do that? I would think. Yeah. Unless it's elongated or shoved in so it's not exactly the same uh, logo. But the, mm -hmm. uh, how about the Wahoo Club? Which has been in existence yeah, since the 50s. Yeah. yeah. Do they have to change their name I now? I would assume somebody will force them to do that. We'll see. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. You've got uh, live racing coming your way. And that is uh, Monday through Wednesday as well as Saturday evenings with a 6 p.m. post time. Don't forget the handicapping contest all weekend long, including the popular Road to the Derby. with uh, Also, and that's on Saturdays. And then the weekly Sunday contest featuring uh, Gulfstream Park. Free admission, free parking every day. That's at Northfield Park. Jim Ingram and I return one more time. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. When my dad started Nature Stone, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems. Unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. Nature Stone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. Nature Stone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and affordable. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise our true unconditional warranty. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Tomorrow night, the D-Man, Dennis Maniloff, will uh, be here. By the way, when we do the show live from 6 until 7, and then uh, you can catch us all day, well, we'll get you in a minute. I'll finish that up in a minute. I want to go into the birthdays and see who's celebrating a birthday. Jim Ray Smith, the Browns lineman back in the 60s. Raymond Berry, maybe uh, the best pair of hands, one of the best pair of hands in uh, the NFL. Jim Dandy, <laughs> 1947. Uh, James Worthy, uh, new Hall of Famer, Tony Gonzalez, seen on the left and Devin Harris all born on the uh, 27th of uh, February. 216-575-0403, so I started to say we do it live from six to seven, and, I, and when people check out the show maybe at nine o'clock at night and I give the phone number, nobody is here to, to take that phone call. And if somebody, and it's, so it's six to seven Eastern time, if somebody answers at any other hour, please call us, we need to know that information as to who's here. You don't hang around and no, wait for the phone? No. <laughs> It forwards to my cell phone. <laughs> Who's calling? It's uh, Devin from Concord. So we haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, <clears throat> this comes in from Lee on uh, email. He says, I'm amazed at the level of optimism for this team, the Indians. Our, sec our best hitter will not be starting the season. Our second best hitter hasn't hit since July. The rest aren't, uh, half, of la the rest aren't half of last season's team. I'm thinking they will struggle. That's a... That's a quintessential Cleveland fan observation. What, that they didn't play well even though they won the division? <clears throat> yeah, basically, yeah, they, yeah. They're not playing well even, yeah, they've been to the playoffs three years in a row. And, no, the quintessential one is, and, and the cheap Dolans made it happen. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, you left out that part, I guess. Yeah. So. Uh, you've been watching the Cavaliers last few games? Uh, sporadically. Yeah, me too. Kind of how they play. You know, if they're going to play sporadically, I'll watch sporadically. Right. By the way, you watch a lot of Games, right? Yes. Are they going out of their way to not let older people see the, the score on the bottom? They have numbers all over the place that, in different colors and everything. Why don't they just put the score? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, the thing I don't like, ESPN's now doing this thing where 
it comes down the left side of the screen. It blots out about a third of the screen. Right. And it's got like like way too much information. If right. You, if you read that whole thing, you would miss like five <laughs> minutes of the game. I mean, you know, you know what's funny though when you when you think about all the years uh, when you watch TV, and then the score was never the score and the clock was never on the screen. Right. You know, and it seems like you know it's second nature now that it's there. I, but I th- said this the other night. I I was I was watching a tape of the uh, Browns uh, eighty six. Uh, playoff game against uh, the New York Jets, the Gastineau game when he mm-hmm. uh, had a, a personal foul uh, roughing the, the quarterback when it would have been fourth and 100 for the Browns. And what you notice most is they don't, ha- they don't have the time up or the score. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a relatively yeah. new invention. Yeah. And, th- and th- I think when they got inside the two-minute warning, they'd, they'd show the clock. Yeah. But o- other than that, they didn't. Mike, I don't know if you agree with me on this. I don't know if we've ever discussed it. We are both lovers of the game of baseball. The, the way they cover the game, forget the, the tags, forget the lower thirds and all that stuff. The way they cover a game is that 99% of the pitches that they show are from the center field camera. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see it from behind home plate, see where the – because you, you get ground balls and you don't, you don't know if there's a shift on, yeah. if they're coming from center field. What, what's your thought on I, that? I couldn't agree. I couldn't disagree more. Really? I think the behind the, behind the home plate one is, is the worst shot in baseball. You can't see the strike zone. You can't, you can't see anything except the rear end of the umpire and the, and the catcher. I think there's nothing more perfect than the center field camera. I mean, you see the break of the ball. You see what the pitcher's trying to do. What if the guy hits a ground ball and – you? And you don't know if it's going to be hit or not, and then they show the shift is on and it's an easy out. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to well, see how way, it got there? The only way that would happen. Are you tell you about that the high shot where no, the whole infield is visible. No, and, no, no. Uh, if if you're getting from uh, behind the pitcher from the center field yeah. camera, the guy hits a ground ball or what? If you're watching, you're saying, all right, is that going in the hole or is there between first and second, yeah. or is there is the shift on and it's a routine out? I never, I, that never, think I never think that way because they, 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 they that does it. You and I are through. <laughs> they switch almost instantly when the ball is hit, so True. you can see whether. Which, by the way, that's gonna... great directing how they are able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what bad directing is. This drives me crazy in basketball when they show close-ups of the coach watching the game while it's going on. <laughs> So we're looking at the guy who's looking at the game. And <laughs> that's what we see. want to look at because we're looking at the guy, the coach. Why Speaking of that? that, have you seen in recent years any coach call any play? Like Mike uh, Fratello would basketball. call every play. Yeah. yeah. You know, when they were going up the court and he yeah. slowed the game down as a result. I never see a coach call a play. Well, that's because there are no plays anymore, especially in the uh, NBA. It's just run down, shoot a three, three and run three. down the other end and shoot a three. When that ball is on the way, the other four guys are on their way to back yeah, on it. Yeah, that's I mean, why rebounding is a phony stat, too. I mean, now. there's tumbleweeds blowing through the key <laughs> because there's nobody in there anymore. There's no such thing as a pure center. Right. It's just all perimeter shooters. And, yeah. and, and So plays, you know, you never see any, like, organized, you know, like plays where they're sitting screens and backdoor cuts and all that stuff. That that doesn't exist most of the time anymore. If Ed, if Red Auerbach came back, what what the heck would he? Say? He'd be calling timeout every ten seconds. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Yeah. Who are you guys? Kuzi, what are you doing? Stop a three shooting. pointer. What is that? Yeah, I mean they don't even need a twenty four second clock. You could get no. by with a ten second. Ten clock. second clock is. I mean, it, 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 it's it's just like it's almost like they're doing wind sprints up yeah. and down the court. Absolutely. All right, that'll do it for us. Great job by Jim Ingram as always. We appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. The D-Man will be here 6 to 7 Eastern time. And, of course, you can find it archived uh, all day and all night on cleveland.com. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.